Hi guys, good evening. Welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie. And in tonight's video, I will be doing my uh, review of the latest episode of The Strain, which premiered earlier tonight on FX. Ooh, it was uh, it was quite an episode. It was uh, pretty damn exciting. I uh, I really really liked it, and I love I love the moments that the awesome moments that every uh, set of characters had. Now, before I keep talking too much and I keep going on and on for too long, and I keep gushing about the episode, please be warned that this review will be full of massive spoilers regarding the most recent episode of the strain. So, if you're not caught up by this episode, or if you're behind by a few episodes, don't keep watching or listening as I will be going going into spoilers. So, you have been warned. That being said, great episode. Great episode overall. It was filled with so many awesome moments. And uh, some moments were a bit darker and nastier than others. You know which ones I'm talking about. And uh, others, you're like, oh, damn. You know, both good and bad. You're like, oh, damn. And oh, damn. You know, so uh, we finally got some answers regarding Satrakian's fate and quite frankly I am surprised that they did not know until now that they had him in their custody that it was only revealed to Icors recently that they had this guy in their custody like they didn't they didn't know this the second they snatched him up of course Dutch lied about her name so Satrakian could have lied about his I was also pleased that uh, we didn't see him die because there was a few moments there during their one-on-one -on -one scene between Icors and Satrakian when he's got that scalpel dangerously close to his chest to his heart I was like, oh God, what if he just takes that scalpel and plunges it into his heart? Mm, but then I thought, no, he really wants him to suffer before he uh, kills him. So, uh, you know, he's going to play with him for a while. And fortunately, uh, fortunately, Dutch was able to uh, get out of there and get to him. And now the two of them can hopefully escape together. Now, granted, we didn't actually see them escape. You know, she pushed him out on the gurney. But I think it's implied that they do escape indeed. And uh, I'm also curious as to see uh, what kind of condition Eichhorst is going to be in after this. Because this dude has been burned by sunlight. He's been hurt by silver bullets. He lost a hand last season. He's been pretty badly injured during the duration of this show. And I'm curious to see if they'll even bother fixing his scarred, burned body, if they'll just leave him the way he is, or if the master will, uh, you know, uh, grant him a new skin tissue or heal him or something. And uh, he's going to be uh, carrying a big, nasty uh, can of whoop ass as well, because I'm sure when he sees Dutch next, he is going to finish her once and for all. Oh god, and the creep it was so creepy and it was so good the scene between the two of them at the dinner table of how quickly he gets to her and he's like uh you know he's like uh t tormenting her with his horrific stinger tongue and he uses it to drink wine cuz you assume he's holding the wine cup he's going to do this but then he's like <laughs> I was like oh <laughs> oh man it was uh, it was great though I was glad to see Dutch you know finally encourage her uh, fellow uh, prisoners to uh, stand up to their uh, captors and fight back and not take their shit anymore and prevent themselves from being slaughtered and she was able to save Satrakian in the process so that's great good on her um, I also really enjoyed what I really liked about F in this episode was that he is seriously trying to not be the guy we have known him to be throughout the whole series. You know, this insecure, raging alcoholic, a womanizer uh, who's slept and uh, been involved with numerous women on the show. And he is really trying not to be that guy because he really willingly told her I don't think it's a good idea we sleep together you know it's just not who I am anymore and she kept insisting no it's not going to happen don't worry but he was really trying to make a point you know he was remaining steadfast and strong that this is not who I am anymore and I'm not going to do this and I, I really liked that I really admire that about him it shows that he really is trying to change or he is changing either way I really like uh, what they did with him in this episode 
And uh, I'm not surprised about the master's final solution, how the New Horizons is nothing but an inter internment camp or basically a concentration camp for humans. Or it looks, or it's most likely another mega human slaughterhouse. And he had a great line about how we're not the farmers. I thought he was going to say the sheep, but livestock works just as well. It definitely applies to this situation. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's definitely um, what's going on there. I also really enjoyed, I loved the uh, hijacking of the uh, parts they needed for the nuclear weapon. I enjoyed that hijacking scene. I like watching Quinlan fight the mongrel. And I also loved uh, Quinlan's frequent uh, back fla flashbacks to uh, 1880s London when he's tracked down by this woman who's trying to find him because he's a so-called immortal and her brother who's dying of syphilis wants to meet him or be cured by him. And I think... The whole reason, my theory is the whole reason we got snippets of Quinlan's uh, flashbacks as to what life was like before the 21st century for him. Um, it's like he probably doesn't want to grow close to Fett or any of his human allies because, you know, he doesn't want to feel anything or maybe he's afraid of feeling human emotions because he is half human and half Strigoi. But I think he was touched by Fett and Charlotte's, you know, uh, compassion for him and care for him. It made him rem remember, it reminded him of this woman he had this really bizarre fling with. I'm not going to say relationship, but it was definitely a fling where, you know, you think they're going to make love. Or there's that great moment where you think they're about to kiss and then you see the two little stingers start to slowly come out of the mouth like... <sighs> And then she pulls back and they pull back in his mouth like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I wasn't surprised that happened because that was. Ugh. And then he bites her in the leg with his stinger or some shit. And it seems to like turn her on or something. I don't know. It was a very awkward, unsettling love scene. <laughs> it was uh, it was something else. But anyway, I think the reason he's remembering all of this is because he is inevitably becoming fond of his human allies. Like, he cracked a smile at Fett after he made some joke about, yes, I know I saved your life, please don't relish in the moment, or some shit like that. And, uh, I, I, you know, and Fett, you know, saying, okay, fine, in return, and that made him smile. So I think, you know, Quinlan starting to finally, you know, not, I think it, it was never a matter of trust. I think it was just a matter of closeness. He's finally growing close with his human allies, which is going to be essential in the battle to come in the final showdown between the master and all his forces, you know. And uh, so that was that was great. And then, uh, you know, I mentioned how that 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 awkward love scene was a bit unsettling. You know, what else was unsettling is that when um, F and uh, F and, um, oh God, I, why can't I remember? Okay, F and his companion, the woman, and then the Strigoi woman find all the luggage. And it's all like, it's all like just throw it on the ground and there's a huge row of it or several rows of it. That scene, that visual itself of seeing all the luggage and suitcases was unsettling because it reminded me of photographs I've seen in history books and old black and white photos of like, you know, scenes of mass human slaughter, specifically from the Holocaust and other past genocides in history where you see all of this luggage and personal effects laid about and you know that there's nobody left to own it all because everybody's dead. And it was just a bit, ooh, it was kind of uh, unsettling. I mean, it was a powerful, it was a powerful image. It just showed you, it was a good example as to what the Strigoi are, are doing to uh, the the uh, to humans, but uh, it was, at the same time it was like, Ew. but uh, this episode, oh, so good! It was so good, and uh, I'm glad things are starting to pick up for a few of our groups of characters. I think the ones who probably had it the worst was F and his ally when they discovered the uh, concentration camp that is uh, New Horizons. So, what did you guys think of tonight's episode? Did you love it? Hate it? Like it? Did anything surprise you? Please remember to leave your thoughts, opinions, and your feedback down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from everybody. As usual, uh, feel free to uh, disagree with one another. Just please keep it civil and be respectful of one another's beliefs and opinions. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will not be able to do my episode review for next Sunday because unfortunately I will be out of town. I'm going on vacation for about a week and a half.
So I will be gone for that. But uh, anyway, don't forget to check out a new episode of The Strain next Sunday on FX. Check your local listings for times. All right, guys, have a great rest of the night. Thanks for watching. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.